biggest night of the UK stock car racing season is here as a massive field of Brisker Formula One stock car drivers descend on Foxhall Stadium Ipswich for the 2017 Championship of the World. 36 drivers will start the World Final with drivers from the UK, the Netherlands and New Zealand here to compete for the ultimate prize. Only one will walk away wearing the coveted gold roof. Frankie Wayneman Jr. defends the title, looking for a fourth world title win of his career, but any one of those on the grid could win on the fast open tarmac sweeps of the Foxhall Stadium circuit. Fantastic night here in Prospect with a massive field of drivers here to compete across a multitude of races. We open with the Constellation semi-final doubling up as Heat 1, and Heat number 2 will follow in the first part of our programme. The World Final coming up in Part 2, followed by the Harry Smith Memorial Grand Final and the Grand National racing in memory of Ben Turner. Before the start of the meeting over, we spoke to some of the favourites ahead of tonight's World Final. 4-4-5, Nigel Green, the man with a huge target on his back today. Yep, yeah, I think you're right, yeah, basically. Um, just see what happens really. I start in the, on the right place and on the clean bit of track, but whether or not it uh, comes to an advantage or not, I don't know really. So just do what I can at the start and see, see where I am after the first corner. Now we've said all season from early on, this is your year, you look like the man to win it this year, but looking behind you, it looks like you've got some issues. Well, I've got competition, I don't know whether it's issues, but with, with all formulas, if you're running near the front, there's tough competition. So yeah, on pace, I think I, I've got the edge, but in this job, when you've got, this is stock car racing, and it's not, it's not just like starting on pole and driving off into the sunset, so. That's why we're expecting a big crowd and that's why everybody's here and betting on different drivers so the favourite man doesn't always win but that's what we're involved in. Number four, Dan Johnson, outside row one. Have you matured this year, learnt from your mistakes? Yeah, you, as you get older you get a bit wiser but it's world final night, everyone's trying that bit extra and your pressure's there, you've got to get, and you've got to be fast and you've got to get going. You can't sit back and think, well, we'll wait for, wait for traffic to happen and accidents to that. You've, you've got to go through them and you've got to be going through them fast. Um, so naturally, you do make mistakes, but this year we, we're not let them all do the work. This, that, this year we, we haven't put a new front bumper on. We, it's not the strongest bumper, but I don't think we're going to need it. We're going to just stay out of traffic and let them, let them do all the work and we'll just take it as it comes really. Obviously we can't really say too much to what's going to happen. You don't know, do you? If Nigel gets away with all the win the world, uh, you know, if you're going flat out, you might not get near him because he's a quick driver. But obviously if he doesn't get away well, then it won't just be me that's pushing. There'll be lots of people pushing. So it'll be a good race. It's the world final. It's, um, it's the biggest race of the year. We've worked so hard all year to get to where we are. And not just this year, throughout the years of racing, it's leading up to moments like this and today. So we'll do what needs to be done on the day to try and get a win. 390, Stuart Smith. It's world final time again. You're the dark horse on the outside of row two, and I think you're where the action's expected to come from. <laughs> yeah, that's some, that gets said every year. Um, I'd like to miss all the action, to be honest, and just yeah. race away into the distance, but this is stock car racing, that doesn't happen. Um, and hopefully for the fans, that won't happen this year as well. As long as I win, I don't care. And last time the world final was here, obviously yeah, your brother who's just stood over there, he was the winner. Yeah, yeah, he um, flag to flag victory. Uh, he started on pole, but I think uh, the drivers know what to expect now, so I don't think anyone's going to let anybody get away. And I think first two laps will determine the race. 515, Frankie Wayman Jr. You're not on the front row, but you're not out of it. No, definitely not, no. It's, uh, Ipswich, big race, a lot of big cars at the front. There's going to be a bit of action, I think. So I think we're sitting quite comfortable as me and Ryan on row four. Just negotiate them for your first few laps and get through and we'll be up with them. I think a clever driver, knowing Ryan is on the inside on row four, would sit back and let Ryan wreck everybody and pick up the pieces. Uh, it depends on Ryan. He's been a bit different this year. He's been driving different. So, uh, you know, I think he's, he's got it in his head. After Holland especially, he's quick. And he knows that you know if he isn't daft at the start, it could definitely be a chance of winning it. We know the car's quick and everything else, but you still got to have a lot of luck on the day, and hopefully it can stay dry, um, and then everyone can have a good race. And you almost gave up on the car, and then you had a, a bit of luck in Venray, and away you went, cleaned up, gold stripes, and uh, you bang on form just at the right time. Yeah, I mean uh, we changed a few things on the car, and 
we've found found a few problems that we was we wasn't seeing before really. Um, put a lot of time and effort into it, and she's going good now. NZ591 Wayne Hemi. First of all, welcome to the UK. What, how are you finding it so far? Well, I'm finding it really good. Uh, it's challenging, but um, it's certainly a lot of fun. Yeah, because you race on clay, you don't race on tarmac or stuff, so you'll have had to adapt your driving style. Yeah, it's, it's a totally different driving style. So, you know, like we kind of revert back to our, what we know. So, um, we've just got to be patient and learn and, and always thinking. So, you, it's quite busy in the cockpit because you're always thinking of how to drive the car. It's a huge commitment for you guys to come over here. I know we send a team of drivers over there, but we possibly have more chance on the dirt over there than you have on the tarmac over here. So it is a big effort. I think it's a huge effort and it's certainly challenging. And you know, a lot of uh, Kiwis and a lot of you know uh, the English people that live in New Zealand have said that like, it's, it's the hardest thing you'll ever do. And it certainly is. We went and had a practice run and I was putting the car in sideways like a sprint car, you know, like I do at home. And, certainly was chapter hard and we've got better and better but we certainly aren't on the pace of the of all the English drivers and um, but you know hey we've we tried we tried our hardest and we're here so um, I'm probably quite happy coming a bit up with the grid because hopefully there's a bit of carnage up the front and we'll just try and find our groove and and try and pluck away from there so it's probably better to be outside of the those uh, those uh, faster cars. Those are just some of the favourites for this year's World Final, but first up we have Heat 1, which doubles up as the Constellation Semi-Final. The top two finishers will qualify for the back of the World Final grid. We have 16 cars out there, starting in graded order. Four red tops at the back, headed by 464 of Luke Davidson. He'll be a favourite here, starting alongside Ben Riley in 422. 196 is Murray Jones, and number 25 alongside him, Bradley Harrison. In pole position is yellow grader number 11, Neil Scriven, alongside him 372, which is local star Colin Goodswin. Behind them, Sean Willis in 287 and 326 of Mark Sargent. Away we go over 16 laps then, 16 cars out there. Luke Davidson already sets off towards the back of the blue graders, attacking uh, Stuart Shevel, the uh, number 518 the Scotsman. It's Neil Scriven who leads around the first turn, as expected, in number 11. Had a couple of wins here earlier this year. Colin Goodswin in second place, Bumper's already going in behind, and wallop straight in goes Matt Armstrong in 4-5-5. Also gets clobbered there by Chris Fort in number three, and already Luke Davidson's halfway through the Blue Graders. He's made his uh, typical flying start. Neil Scriven out in front, though, ahead of Goodswin. Race starting to settle in. Settle in, looks like it's uh, Michael Stewart in 5-1-2 in third place. Luke Davidson side by side there with one of the Blue Tops, banging wheels with the 183 car that was of Steve Whittle. He's got Chris Cowley alongside him in number 37. Michael Stewart in third place. Davidson already on lap three. He's up into fourth place. Made an absolutely flying start from towards the back. Under their way around this very fast Vauxhall Heat circuit. Neil Scriven, he and his brother Michael, tarmac specialists, said in the past that if every uh, meeting was held at either Hensford or Ipswich, they'd have a clean sweep of titles in the sport. Davidson in fourth place, then it's Chris Cowley. Behind them is Murray Jones in 196, then we've got Chris Fort in number three. A bit of bumper work behind Carl Hawkins, firing his way through in car number 175, the V8 Hotstocks graduate, battling with Stuart Shevel in 518, one of the uh, two Scottish drivers here at tonight's meeting, the other one being John Fortune, number 164. 25 Bradley Harrison under fire from the 422 of Ben Riley. Shevel up alongside Hawkins goes through, so all the battling towards the back of the field at the moment. Fighting for the minor placing. The leaders have got away, still Neil Scriven. He's the way up front, Bradley Harrison under fire from Riley. Getting everything in sight here, Ben Riley in 422, the Raid Master as we call him, but dry conditions here at Foxhall for this year's World Final. Away goes number 11 of Neil Scriven in Still the battle raging for the minor placings further back. Ben Riley currently in ninth place ahead of Steve Whittle. Stuart Shevel getting away ahead of them in eighth because Luke Davidson has caught Michael Stewart. The Union flag is out, that means halfway. So eight laps gone, eight to go in this Constellation semi-final. Don't forget, only the first two finishes qualify for the World Final in this effectively a last chance race. Davidson is going for those two yellow graders, Neil Scriven and Colin Goodswin, still hold first and second. And the back straight they go. Scriven from Gloucestershire. Goodswin, local man from East Anglia, in second place. 
David Shinwell from the northwest in third. Closing in on the top two now. Michael Stewart in fourth place in 5 1 2. These four have broken away well and truly from the rest of the field. Chris Cowley and Murray Jones next up. Boards are out, five to go. The start marshal signals. There is Ben Riley in 4 2 2. And a cracking season this year, one of the most improved drivers this season. It looks like he's going to miss out sadly on the world final. Davidson driving the Tom Harris car. Closing in on Colin Goodswin now for second place. Looking to move on to the back of the world final grid. He'll certainly be a factor, especially in the early stages of the world final if he gets through. Closing up on Goodswin. Three laps to go. Looks like it's between these three for the two qualifying places now. Neil Scriven looking for a flag-to-flag -flag victory. Can Goodswin get into his first world final? Davidson's on his bumper now. Davidson has got the fastest lap of the race, closing in on the 372 car. There goes the bumper in, but he clips the inner curb there. That loses him his chance that time. Davidson clipping the curb, which sends him wide. Try again into turn three. This time he's got it right. Gets the bumper in up the inside, and through goes Davidson into second place. I don't think he's going to catch Neil Scriven. Looks like it is going to be a win for the yellow grader. I don't think Davidson will get close enough on the final turn. Mark Sargent slowing up there. He's out of it. It's going to be a win for number 11, the man from Lechlade in Gloucestershire. Neil Scriven comes in to win, and Luke Davidson joins him on the back of the world final grid. I think Colin Goodsman lost third place there on the last bend to uh, Michael Stewart as well. The rest of them come home. Fairly straightforward race there for Neil Scriven, leading flag to flag. But Luke Davidson was the highlight, charging through from the back to take second place. Scriven the winner ahead of Davidson by just under a second. Michael Stewart snatching third. Colin Goodswin, Murray Jones taking fifth ahead of Chris Cowley and Chris Ford, Ben Riley, Stu Sheddle and Carl Hawkins. On to heat number two then. These are the drivers not involved in the world final. A good field of 27 cars out there for this one, including a couple of Dutchmen. Aaron Leach on pole position alongside Sam Jacklin in number one at 3-7. Dutch drivers including Jan van der Eest and Pascal Speet further back in the pack. The green flag goes down and away they go. Aaron Leach will lead them away in car number 17. There's Nigel Harry in number 45 chasing Paul Hopkins in 278. Helsinger, another Dutchman in there as well. They almost tangle up there on the outside. Round goes Pascal Speet in H6. We've also lost Chris Cook in the Ford engine number 460 car with Yarrow dodging his way through there on the inside in the blue grade number 22. A lively start here to our second heat. There's John Fortune, number 164, the Scotsman, former Brisker F2 world champion. Chris Cook reverses out of the way onto the speedway track. The stadium also the home of the Ipswich Witches speedway team. So leading the way it is Aaron Leach, has really come of age on tarmac this year. There's Nigel Harry battling away as always in 45. 13, Kelvin Hassel chased by 301 and Mark Allen, the man from Sussex, as Harry gets the bumper in on Paul Hopkins in 278. They're trying to chase down a little of the yellow tops, that's Fortune. This is the main battle at the moment. They're further back in the pack, though, as Leach leads ahead of Kelvin Hassel. Here is Aaron Leach lapping Sam Render in car number 385, the Lincolnshire driver. Aaron Leach has cleared off in front. Fastest lap of the race recorded by Sean Webster. The man from Sheffield, another tarmac specialist. And Steve had a final win here earlier this year. 483, Wayne Marshall driving one of Matt Newsom's many higher cars goes a lap down. 9-5 Dean Whitwell goes through and uh, Kelvin Hassel gets sent wide there. A couple of spinners on turn two on the outside. I'll try and identify them in a moment. Mickey Randall coming through in 172. We've not seen too much of him this year. The winner of Wimbledon at the last ever Mr. F1 meeting at Wimbledon back in March. Aaron Leach is away and gone, out on his own in number 70 in this heat number two. White Raiders all the way behind him. And there is Mark Allen in 301. He's running well in the next Mark Peters 231 car. And there's Harry Stewart, number 126. The classic hot rod points champion. Still only a young gun driving Todd Jones's car for this world final meet. He gets past Pascal Spates, the Dutchman. In H6, not to be confused with the man with the same number, Jan Keitzer. Actually not able to race this world final weekend. The other H6, he blew his engine in practice. So 18 Colin there, it's fired wide there by Mark Allen, who's chasing Harry Stewart. The battle for the minor placing, Darren Leach is way and clear 
in front. Stewart running well, there's Neil Hooper as well in 5-4-5, the man from Devon. Drivers from all over the UK, plus the Netherlands and New Zealand as well. Here at this world final meeting, Darren Leach, Mike Rayner, showing them all the way at the moment. That horns will be out shortly. There is Mark Allen. He's dropped back into fourth place now behind Neil Hooper in 5.45. Going to lose another place here because 172 Tricky Mickey, Mickey Randall comes through. We pass sell number 13. And the fire there from John Fortune and from the H6 car of Pascal Spates, Kelvin Hassel, who's raced uh, everything from historic saloons on the circuits to uh, legends cars and has also raced on the ovals in America. Battle here further back in the order. There's Scott Davids in 462, winner of the Trust Fund race at Northampton this year. It's another Matt Newson car he's driving. So Aaron Leach in number 70 going well. Brisker F2 graduate Ashley England has also been racing this car this year. And it comes up to Matt Pollard in 280. And from Leicester. It's plain sailing for Aaron Leach in number 70. He's got less than two laps to run. It's like it's still Harry Stewart in second place in number 126. Nigel Harry slowing up there in the background, the number 45 car looks like he is out of it. Aaron Leach with a very straightforward victory coming up. He's on his last lap now in among a crowd of back marks. He's got Wade Marshall in 483, Daz Kitson, former F2 world champion in 532, ahead of him there. And going backwards there, Martin Spires on the final turn. It doesn't delay Aaron Leach who takes the win in car number 70 by a very clear margin. Three seconds clear of the in second place Harry Stewart. Confirm the rest of the results in just a moment. Aaron Leach, the winner then, white grade winner on World Final Night. He is certainly going places in this sport, Aaron Leach, on the new talents to emerge over the last couple of years. Winner by 3.2 seconds ahead of Harry Stewart, Neil Hooper. The Devon driver taking third place ahead of Mickey Randall, John Fortune and Sean Webster. 21 cars went the distance in that one. It was second place Harry Stewart who got the fastest lap of the race. Great action so far, but the big one is coming up shortly. The race of the year, the 2017 Brisker Formula One Stock Car Championship of the World is coming up after this short break. Find out who's going to win the gold in just a few moments' time. Don't go away. Welcome back to Foxhall Stadium, where the Brisker Formula One Stock Cars Championship of the World is just a few moments away. Before the start, we caught up with a few drivers to find out what the World Final means to them. Uh, I was in it in 2014 at Coventry, and it was packed. It was absolutely full to the rafter. It was a fantastic experience, and it's a memory that will live with me forever. Loved it, and I shall never forget that day. Carnage. Um... <laughs> look in the mirror it's going to mean a lot to us all um, especially the team lads that without them and the sponsors and actually me, my family and my dad and my wife we, we just won't, won't be able to do what we do it is everything it's everything that we do in this sport is for this one moment fingers crossed it'll be ours today world final means everything it means once you've won it you've got a year of being top dog gold roof and um my family tradition is, is winning world finals. That's so. really awesome. The day, the experience, being involved with it. Obviously, it's Frankie's first one this year. You know, his, his face at Skegness when he knew he'd qualified, that was a picture. Just happy to take part in it, happy to be in the race. Um, uh, it's just another race, you know. There's not a lot else you can say about it. You've kind of got us hooked on this, so we want to come back and, um, and we've also got a lot of support over here as well. It's the pinnacle. It's what everybody in the sport I presume wants to do, wants to win. It means a lot, it's one of the things where you do the rolling lap and uh, hairs on the back of your neck stand up and you get tingles and you know, I don't know if it's nerves or excitement, but yeah, when that green flag goes, it's uh, it's pretty special. It's the biggest race of the year. It means everything to stock car racing. I won it once, I should have won it a lot more times, but when you're at top of sport, things don't always go to plan in world finals. Drivers, start your engines. The most famous words in motorsport herald 36 V8 engines into life for the biggest race of the stock car season. 36 drivers from the UK, the Netherlands and New Zealand on the grid for 25 laps of action to decide the World Championship in pole position. Number 445, Nigel Green, 
dominated the European Championship at Northampton earlier this season. Alongside him, number four of Dan Johnson, former silver top, former European champion. Second row of the grid headed by Paul Hines in 259. Alongside him, 390 of Stuart Smith. What a great early season run he had. He couldn't stop winning early this season. 417 Frank Wouters next on the grid for the Netherlands alongside H77 of Wesley Shupp. We're on board looking back from Nigel Green, the pole man in 445. He starts as the favourites given his form on tarmac this year. He's won a total of nine finals this year, mostly on the tarmac. Wonderful setting here, Foxhall Stadium, packed with fans from all over Europe. There is the silver top, 318 Rob Speak. Yes, he's back, starting alongside number one of Junior Wayman, the defending champion. Will he still be number one after this event? Or will he go back to his old number of 515? Green on pole ahead of Johnson. Hines and Smith on the second row. Then we've got Frank Wouters and the H77 car of Wesley Shupp. There's Ryan Harrison in 197. Junior Wayman is out there. Rob Speak and the rest of them. Matt Mad Dog Newson starts alongside Rob Speak. Johan Katzberg from the Netherlands. Ben Herdman in 207. H217 of Ron Kronda, Dutch veteran. There's Craig Finnekin in 55. Paul Harrison, number two. Both of them former world champions. New Zealanders on the grid. We've got NZ19 of Kerry Remnant. NZ2 Jordan Dare. So NZ591 of Wayne Hemi, NZ1 of Simon Joblin out there as well. The quartets from down under. 335 there, Mark Woodhull going through. Drew Lamas in 543, making his World Championship debut. 8699, that's Jan Cowen in the pink car. In as a reserve after Jan Keitzer blew his engine in practice. Starting towards the back. H12 of Everts Vandenberg and H65, that is Hans Bagen. Strong Dutch representation as always. Fireworks at the back of the grid. The real fireworks are going to be when the race gets underway, though. The Mercedes Benz and Audi pace cars top and tail the field. They roll their way around. Nigel Green and Dan Johnson will then take over, setting the pace. Riding on board with New Zealander Simon Joblin driving the ex Paul Ford car. Paul, of course, retired from Brisker F1 earlier this season. 5-4-3, Drew Lamas ahead. There's Danny Wayman in 2-1-2, quite a way down the world final grid. He won't stay that far back for long. On row 15, we have our two qualifiers from the consolation semi-final earlier on. Neil Scriven and Luke Davidson. Wayne Hemi we caught a glimpse of there in 5-9-1. We heard from him earlier, driving one of Lee Fairhurst's cars. H380 there, that is Christian Weyenberg, another of our Dutchmen. Pace beginning to quicken now as they roll round one more time. The green flag next time by. Green and Johnson will take over to set the pace at the front. 36 cars out there. Here they come then, they move down the back straights. It's time for the main events. The 2017 Brisker Formula One Stock Cars Championship of the World. 36 cars, 25 laps. Let's get ready to rumble. The green flag goes down and they're away. Great start by Nigel Green. Anticipated the start there superbly. Paul Hines fights his way through. There's the inevitable first turn pile up behind them. At least four or five cars go into the fence. More cars piling behind. Uh, Luke Davidson's in there. Michael Scriven as well. Too many others to really see who'd gone in. Everybody else getting around the first of that lap just about OK. One car sliding out wide there. That was Ben Herdman, I think, in 207. Rob Speak fires in. Matt Newson. he's going to go into the pile-up. More cars go in. Uh, Frank Bouters and Paul Harrison's in there. The 220 of Will Hunter has gone in as well. It's inevitably going to be a yellow flag. Yes, the yellow is out. Seems to happen in every world final. There's always a first turn pile-up. Somebody going over one of the marker tyres there in the background. I think that's Paul Harrison, possibly, in car number two. That could be the end of his hopes in this world final, but we go under caution with a pile-up on turns one and two. H228, I can see in there, that's uh, Jan Roloff-Vibenga. 
Let's have a look again from the pole sitter, Nigel Green. Now, he anticipated the start very well. He slowed right down. He was actually behind Dan Johnson as they came round turns three and four, and then he floored the throttle to bamboozle those behind him and get away from them. There he goes. Just got away by about three or four car lengths from everybody else as they came over the start line, but everybody else just piled straight in behind. It was Rob Speak, no surprise there, doing the pushing. Let's see here how many he got rid of. Well, uh, Frank Vouchers, H417, had already got sideways. He was first into the wall, and then about four or five more came piling in. And everybody else just got uh, caught up behind them. Jan Cowan tangling with Everett Vandenberg there. On board with Lee Fairhurst in 217. He was caught up in that. We saw him in front. He was right underneath it all. We saw him in front of Nigel Green, so he was a lap down. Jan Roloff Bibenga, lucky not to go into the side of somebody's cab there. And then a lap later, Rob Speak put Matt Newson into the pile-up. Then Frank Bouters piled in by Harrison. Woodhull goes in, Hunter and a couple of others. On board with Simon Joblin, the New Zealander. He got through on the inside. Meantime, Stuart Smith escaped the pile-up, as did Frankie Wayman Jr. But as they came round again, the bumper went in from Smith. In went Wayman, but we saw there the yellow flag was already out, I think. We'll see it here as Wayman comes out of turn four. Yes, the caution flag was already out. Then the hit came in from Smith. Wayman going in on Mark Woodhull and Jan Rola Fibenga. So Wayman, I think, will be able to take his place for the restart. Well, one driver who won't be restarting is the unfortunate Wayne Hemi. His car with three wheels. The fence has taken a bit of a hit there as well. A bit of work going on on the Armco Barrier. So ready for the restart then. The uh, damaged cars of Frank Bouters, Wayne Hemi, and also the uh, 77 of Wesley Shutt on the infield. It's Nigel Green in the lead. Wayman and Smith have been able to retake their places. Luke Davidson in 464 is a lap down, so Wayman and Smith still third and fourth. It's Green and Johnson up front, ready for the restart. Ryan Harrison in 197 is in fifth position. Nigel Green bringing them round. He's almost come to a dead stop there in the middle of turn three. He's done it again. He comes almost to a complete stop, then floors the throttle, which backs up everybody behind. That was a Sebastian Vettel-style restart. Away goes Nigel Green. He keeps his lead. Luke Davidson drops away, so it's Ryan Harrison gets past him, attacking Stuart Smith for fourth place. It's Green, Johnson, Wayman, Smith, and he fired in there. That was Ron Cronder in H217. And the Dutchman goes in. Luke Davidson still behind Ryan Harrison there. Rob Speak is up in the sixth position, making a one-off return for this world final. The reigning national points champion, somebody pulling off there, I think that was Simon Joblin, under the New Zealanders out of it as we ride on board with Frankie Waveman Jr. Chasing Dan Johnson, it's quite a rivalry over them for the points championship a few years ago. It's Nigel Green in 4 4 5, who's been the king of tarmac this year. Leads the way, there's a tangle, that's Neil Scriven and Frankie JJ, Frankie Waveman Jr. Jr. That almost took out uh, somebody else onto the speedway track there, didn't quite see who it was. So it's Green, a second ahead of Johnson, then Waveman Smith, Ryan Harrison, Rob Speak, then Craig Finnegan, and the first Dutchman is number 99, which is Johan Katzberg. Stuart Smith in fourth place in 390, under fire from 197 of Ryan Harrison. As the light begins to fade here at Ipswich. Simon Joblin still going. He attacks Ron Cronder. Paul Hines has dropped back into the pack in 259. Starting on the second row is Simon Joblin. Now has a go at Frankie JJ in treble five. It's Paul Ford car goes through. I'm sure Wayman will attack back again. Nigel Green is starting to pull away on his uh, ninth lap of the race this time. Coming up to lap, Jan Cowan in the pink machine there, H699. It's past him coming out of turn two. His next target will be Jordan Dare in NZ2, driving Jordan Folding's car as uh, Cowan has a go at the race leader, but just gets himself, spins out there and uh, takes Neil Scriven with him. There is Jordan Dare in NZ2. He's been lapped. Next target for Nigel Green will be at 335, which is Mark Woodhull, primarily a shale racer. Nigel Green continues to lead the world final, looking for his first world championship. Dan Johnson, though, is still there, a couple of car lengths back. These two have pulled clear of the rest of the field now, pulling off Neil Scriven in number 11. The consolation semi-final with Green ahead of Johnson. Further back, Junior Wayman is still third, then Stuart Smith. Ryan Harrison rounds out the top five. No change among the leading runners at the moment, then. It's Nigel Green laps Everts at Vandenberg, the Dutchman in H12. There is Wayman in third place on his own now. He has dropped Stuart Smith. He's put a back marker in between the two of them. Jordan Dare has spun out there on turn three. Somebody else slowing up. I think that's Simon Joblin has pulled off again. 
On board with Lee Fairhurst, he was delayed at the start of the race, got caught up in the pylon, closing up on Billy Johnson, no relation to Dan, in uh, car 169. Down the back straight they go, Let's see from this angle just how wide the track is here at Vauxhall. Billy Johnson slowing up, Lee Fairhurst makes up a place on his recovery, and Johnson lapping Ben Herdman in 207, the ex-Auto Grasser. Still these two for the lead, they're coming up to lap Jan Cowan, the ex-Banger racer in uh, 699 once again there are 10 laps to go this time around for 445 Nigel Green he fires Jan Cowan out wide that's revenge earlier on and Cowan crashes into almost crashes into Kerry Remnant in the NZ19 who's spun out there on the outside Jan Cowan now under fire from uh, Junior Wayman in number one could he be about to lose the gold roof to Nigel Green behind them there's a change for fourth 197 of Ryan Harrison has taken Stuart Smith. These five clear of the rest of the pack. Ian Wayman taps Jan Cohen out wide. Drew Lammas ahead of him, his first world final. Graduate of the F2s, and very well indeed to reach his first world championship final in 5-4-3. Top two starting to get away now. Seven laps to go in the 2017 Brisker Formula One Stock Cars Championship of the World. It's green. Johnson has closed the gap a little, then Wayman, Harrison, Smith, Speak is still in six, then Finnegan, Johan Katzberg, Rob Crumder, and Paul Hines, your top ten, as Simon Joblin spins, and he's been tang tangled up there, I think that's Paul Hines who's crashed into him yesterday, a great cloud of smoke and dust, but the leaders got through, Matt Newson has been lapped in car number 16, tough race for Matt, having had so many higher cars to prepare and repair for tonight. There goes Nigel Green, he's led every lap of this world final so far, but Dan Johnson is not letting him get away. We're coming into the final five laps now, on board with Matt Newson, looking at our race leader, Nigel Green in 4-4-5. Former mini stocks racer, made his uh, senior stock car debut in 2007 in the Formula 2s. Greenman under fire here for second place from flying Ryan Harrison, in goes the bumper into turn three, Ryan Harrison about to move into a podium position, he elbows Wayneman wide, he's through, with four laps to go into third place, Ryan Harrison into a podium spot, behind them is 390, Stuart Smith, Luke Davidson behind him is a lap down, we're very much in the closing stages now and Dan Johnson needs to push hard, it's just between him and Nigel Green now, I would say for a world final victory, but if they tangle on the last couple of laps, Ryan Harrison could inherit his first world title. Nigel Green leads it, Johnson is pushing on, he's closing the gap slightly, a couple of laps to go. Nigel Green from Leicestershire, Dan Johnson from Nottinghamshire. Ten years ago, Nigel Green debuted with victory at Birmingham in his first ever Formula 2 race. Dan Johnson, a former European champion, former national points champion, is closing on the current European champion. One lap to go for Nigel Green in the 2017 Championship of the World. They're coming into the back straight. Is Dan Johnson going to get close enough to attack? On the last bend, he's going to have to try everything here. He's going to try and lunge it. He misses completely, he puts himself straight into the wall. And Nigel Green out of the final turn is world champion. Green has done it. Takes his first world title. Throws the car around in celebration. Nigel Green in 445. Won the European Championship earlier this year. He's been the dominant force on tarmac. And he is the champion of the world for 2017. Congratulations to Nigel Green, the milky bar kid, as some call him. Cuts loose in celebration as the fireworks go off on the centre green here at Foxhall Stadium. Green the winner. Johnson went for everything on the last bend. Tried to connect with the back bumper. He went straight over the speedway track, went straight on. There was no way he was going to connect. And Dan Johnson nearly ends up in Ipswich Town Centre as Nigel Green crossed the line to take the World Championship. Johnson, there was no way he was going to connect there. He had to go for everything, but instead ends up just going straight into the wall, wrecking his own car and Nigel Green takes the World Championship. Congratulations to the man from Leicestershire, brother of Jamie Green, the DTM touring car driver. And the celebrations will now begin. Looks like it was Ryan Harrison who crossed the line in second ahead of Junior Wayneman. The runner-up congratulates the new champion in the winner's circle on the centre. It's Nigel Green climbs to the top of his car in celebration. Typical of uh, Nigel, relatively muted uh, celebrations there as he got out of the car. Normally we'd see the driver waving to everyone from his aerofoil. A little more understated from Nigel Green, the winner ahead of Ryan Harrison, Junior Wayneman, 
taking third. Stuart Smith fourth, Rob Speak on his one-off appearance in fifth position. And Craig Finnegan, top Dutchman was Johan Katzberg. And Danny Wayneman, Michael Scriven and Ron Kronda rounding out the top ten. Fastest laps of the race recorded by Nigel Green and Junior Wayneman all the way. The celebrations start then, the champagne is sprayed. Congratulations to Nigel Green, Risker Formula One Stock Car Champion of the World. 445, Nigel Green, world champion. Yeah, it's great news, yeah. It's, uh, it's what I wanted, obviously, starting at the front, but when everyone's branding it as your own race and all the rest of it, it felt like it, it could only go one way, and that was downhill, but for it to go my way and to, to win it, yeah, it's great, not just for me, for everybody involved in the team. There's no way I could win this race without all of their help in all different ways, obviously. My wife Francesca and the two kids, Fred and Millie, their, their weekends are took up racing. And then everybody that works on the team who you've just seen there. So yeah, it's a big team effort. What did I tell you? Goes wrong in practice, it goes right in the race. So yeah, it's, it's great really for everybody. It's a big achievement and uh, yeah, they can't take it away from us. Well, after all the dramas this afternoon in practice and everything, you nailed that first restart and then obviously avoided all the carnage and did it again in the second. Yeah, I was getting pushed heavily on the other restart, so I just thought I had to just go earlier than I was aiming to, so I had to go quite early. A lot of eager people behind me trying to get on, obviously. So, no, it's a track, it's quite a tight exit on the going over to the start line, so if you pick up the throttle at the right time, you can get a gap on people, and I managed to achieve that. The hardest thing was dealing with the back markers, the Pink Panther or whatever he is in that in that Dutch car, I'm not sure what his problem was, but he nearly cost me the race, so uh, that was a bit frustrating. Yeah, the number 12 car did have a lunge at you down into turn three, and then Dan Johnson had an even bigger lunge on the last corner. I suppose for him, second was nothing, he had to go for it. Yeah, he obviously wanted it bad, didn't he? He, uh, he come from a long way back, he tried to, well, like, like you just said, he obviously wanted to win. He's not interested in second, so he just got stuck in and it didn't go to plan, did he? It was a bit too far back, but he got to have a go, I suppose. Well, congratulations, and we'll remind you again, world champion. Thank you. Lovely. Congratulations once again then to uh, Nigel Green. His evening has come to an end. It's now time for the meeting final. This is the Harry Smith Memorial Trophy race. We've got a huge field of 38 cars out there on track for this one of big names out there. There's Frankie JJ and Ben Herman at the front of the red tops. Will Hunt up, didn't have a happy time in the world final, got caught up in the first corner pile-up. 464 of Luke Davidson, likewise, he finished the lap down. Number of world finalists, number of qualifiers from the two heats joining them. There's Steve Whittle and Carl Hawkins in among the blue tops. Big, big field out there on the Ipswich tarmac for this meeting final, racing in memory of ex-driver Harry Smith. He was number 100. Every year, the meeting final on World Final Night is raced for in memory of Harry. There's Matt Mewson and Craig Finnegan at the front of the uh, superstar grade as Jan Cohen goes out the back. And it's Aaron Leach in number 70 who leads them off at the green flag. And already we've got a tangle among the yellow graders. John Fortune, Mickey Randall and a couple of others get uh, caught up, I think that's Dean Whitwell, yes, caught up on the outside. Chaos around the first turn, great cloud of smoke, more problems down the back straight, whoa, who's that? Going up onto two wheels there, that was Michael Stewart in uh, the 5-1-2 car, I think he hit Daz Kinson in 5-3-2 in the uh, Bobby Griffin car. Sparks flying from 164 John Fortune there, he's adding to the firework displays here this evening. Goodness me, we go on board with Stewart Smith, and who's that doing a wheelie? That was Craig Finnegan in 55, bit of a mad start to this Harry Smith Memorial meeting final. 99, Johan Katzberg, the Dutchman ahead of us. Few Dutchmen have got through to this race. I don't think we've got any of the New Zealand contingent though, sadly. It's Aaron Leach, who leads the way in the number 70 car, looking for a heat and final double. There's Junior Wayman in number one, and we'll be back to 515, his regular number after tonight. With Nigel Green taking the goal, we'll wait to see if he takes number one. He has the option to, but he could keep his own number. As Wallop straight in there goes one of the blue tops. I think that might have been uh, Drew Lamas in 5 4 3. We lost a couple of cars there on turn four. Chris Ford is one of them in number three. And there's a commentator's nightmare 2 2 1 7. So we've got Lee Fairhurst in 2 1 7 and H 2 1 7 of Ron Cromder behind him. It was Drew Lamas who crashed out. He's stranded on turn four. Michael Stewart, we saw him on two wheels earlier on, having a go at Aaron Leach. The 
race leader. They come through turn four, but we've got yellow flags, presumably for those stranded cars on turn four. Uh, John Fortune and Drew Lamas out of the race. They're judged to be in a dangerous position, so the race is brought under caution. Getting ready for a restart then. Up front is Aaron Leach. Behind him, that is uh, the 495 car, Richard Howarth. I think he's a lap down. So next in the order is Neil Scriven and third place, Harry Stewart. They're on board with Lee Fairhurst in one of the two 217 cars. And him, Paul Hopkins in 278 as the green goes down. The power comes on. And away we go under the floodlights here at Foxhall Stadium in Switch. Inside goes Lee Fairhurst attacking Paul Hopkins, the yellow top. Further back in the pack, it's uh, the fire from Johan Katzberg at the same time in 99. Through goes Stuart Smith, makes up two places there. He's moving through pretty rapidly now, attacking Ron Crunder in H217, the Dutch veteran, former world long track champion. The 1000 metre over at Barlow in the Netherlands, and here comes Harry Stewart. In goes the bumper on our race leader. Stewart about to take the lead as they come through turns three and four. Lost a couple more cars there on the outside, both of them yellow tops. Identify those in a moment as Harry, as Harry Stewart takes over the lead. We've got yellow flags again. The yellows are out again. I think it's those two yellow tops who are off at turns three and four. Gaz Kidson pulling up there in 5-3-2. Uh, that's Neil Hooper, one of those cars up there on turn three. Let's have a look what's happened. Oh, it was Paul Hopkins who went spinning out. He hit the wall backwards. And as he came to a halt, Neil Hooper ran out wide and wallop head on into him he went. So two yellow tops involved in that set crash there. Harry Stewart, your leader, another yellow grader in 126 ahead of Aaron Leach. Stewart, the ex-classic hot rod points champion. All his family have raced hot rods over the years. His father, Tick Stewart, his uncle Andy, and uh, several others. So we get ready for the restart. Then the pace car has pulled off, and away goes Harry Stewart, not waiting for the green lights there. Uh, was that a jump start? I certainly think it was. So he may get a penalty for that, Harry Stewart, but he leads them off ahead of Aaron Leach. Everybody else single file behind them. Stuart Smith making up another couple of places there. Gets ahead of, uh, I think that's Tristan Jackson in car number 101. Colin Woods went slowing up. Local man in 372. Three seconds in once again. Then it's Stewart and Leach up front. Then we've got Neil Scriven in number 11. Then the higher graders beginning to close in. We've got the two 217s of... Cronder and Fairhurst. Cronder, the best we've seen a Dutchman run tonight. Starting to spring out a little more now. There's the race leader. The Dutchman ahead of him, he's pulling off. Not a great meeting for him. He missed out on qualification for the world final earlier on by a couple of laps when Luke Davidson sent him wide. There is Lee Fairhurst now attacking Aaron Leach. Behind them, Stuart Smith. And Ron Cronder also in there is Luke Davidson. Smith chasing now Aaron Leach to try and fire him into the back of Lee Fairhurst. He does so. That was a perfectly judged manoeuvre by Stuart Smith. He makes up two places. Moving towards the sharp end of the field, his next target will be Neil Scriven. He's in third place. Trying to come towards the closing stages now of this Harry Smith Memorial meeting final. The 2 2 1 7 still battling behind Stuart Smith ahead of Fairhurst and Fairhurst gets dispatched there by Junior Waitman in number one it's still Harry Stewart from Luke Davidson in second place Neil Scriven is in third the rest of the battle behind Luke Davidson Scriven and Stuart Smith battling for second starting to close up now Stuart Smith on the number 11 car up the inside of Davidson they go up into second and third Davidson pulling out wide there I think he might have a problem there's our leader, Harry Stewart. He's in backmarker traffic. He's got the pink machine of Jan Cowan ahead of him, number 699. Seems to have lost Luke Davidson, so the battle of second is now between Scriven and Smith. There's Ron Cromder ahead of Junior Waitman and Lee Fairhurst. Aaron Leach in behind them. This is for second place now. We have indeed lost the 464 car of Davidson. Stewart's away and gone in front. Here comes Smith on the attack for second place. He puts the bumper in on Scriven and wallops straight in. He goes. We lose Neil Scriven from the battle. There's Luke Davidson parked up on turn four. So Stuart Smith now clear in second place as Neil Scriven bangs wheels with Stu Shevel. I think that was somebody else nearly going off in avoidance. Through comes our leader, Harry Stewart, mired in backmarker traffic. Myers at one of the yellow tops out wide there, as well as Bradley Harrison in 25. Will Harry Stewart face a penalty here? 
my view, he jumped that restart. He was gone and away before the green flag had been shown. He's on his last lap now. Will Stewart Smith inherit the victory? He's in second place. Two battles further back down the order, but Harry Stewart is going to come in to take the chequered flag. Stewart wins it in 1 2 6. Began his career in mini stocks and moved on to classic hot rods in a Ford Anglia, of all things, before moving to Brisker F1. He's the current UK Open champion. Wins the meeting final on the track here at Foxhall Stadium tonight for the Harry Smith Memorial Trophy. But we'll check in a moment if he is going to receive a penalty for jumping that restart. Have a look at the official result, and yes, indeed, Harry Stewart is docked to third place for jumping the restart. So Stewart Smith takes the win ahead of Dutchman Ron Thrunder in second place, Junior Wayneman fourth, Lee Fairhurst rounding at the top five. Harry Stewart compensated with the fastest lap of the race. 3 9 0, Stuart Smith Jr. Not the way you want to win the final, but a final's a final, isn't it? Yeah, young Gary, you know, he's eager, he knew he were quick. Um, you just can't start there and I've told him he knows for next time but he'll go out in this next one and I'm pretty sure he'll win yeah. by a long way. I mean I'm starting in front of him and who knows, he might even pass me, I don't think he will, but I hope not. Thank you. Final race of the night then, the Grand National, this race run in memory of Ben Turner, a long time stock car fan who passed away sadly at a young age. A few years ago, we've got just under 30 cars out there for the Ben Turner Memorial Trophy. Stuart Smith, winner of the meeting final, will start from the one-lap handicap as ever. Now, can Harry Stewart make up for his disappointment of being docked in the meeting final by taking a win this time? He's at the back of the yellow tops. The mix of drivers from all grades out in this one. There's Jordan Dare at the back, the New Zealander, Wayne Marshall and Kelvin Hassell will lead them off from the front of the White Raiders ahead of the number 70 of Aaron Leach. Away we go then. Now towards that first turn, the Yellow Raiders falling over each other. The green flags haven't gone out. The green flag has not gone out, so that's an unsatisfactory start. The Yellow Raiders don't seem to have realised, though, there's a tangle there. Gert Elzinger, the Dutchman, tangles with Colin Goodswin. The red flag's now coming out, and that will be a complete restart. So the greens, in fact, did not go out there. The steward of the meeting not happy with the start, probably the uh, grades closing up on each other too quickly. That's a red flag, it will be a complete restart. Let's try again then, again Wayne Marshall and Kelvin Hassell in 4.83 and 13, in two of Matt Newson's cars will lead them away. Off they go, they get a green flag this time, slow start by Marshall, so it's Kelvin Hassell who goes into the early lead again, the yellow grade is already bashing all over each other there, and Matt Armstrong spinning, he gets collected head-on by Pascal Spate in H6, I think that was, there's more problems down the back straight caused by John Fortune slowing up, a couple of cars take to the speedway track in avoidance, including Frankie JJ in treble five, more cars in trouble there, Chris Ford parking up on turn four, exactly where he did earlier on in the meeting final, Scott Davids gets fired into Pascal Spate's dead car there by, uh, that was Johan Katzberg in the 99 car, Fairhurst gets past Michael Stewart in 5-1-2, no relation to Harry, incidentally. We've got yellow flags again because there's a fair few stranded cars. I can see Chris Fort, uh, John Fortune, and Nigel Harry as well in 45. Here's what happened to Matt Armstrong in 4-5-5, the man who lives over in France. He got spun aside, and then in will come Pascal Spates. There he is, wallop head-on into the 4-5-5 car. So that was one of the uh, number of reasons for the caution there. There were several stranded cars. Kelvin Hassell leads ahead of Aaron Leach, that man Harry Stewart up into third place, and Simon Joblin, the New Zealander, up into fourth in NZ1. Lee Fairhurst just behind him, here we go with the restart. Good restart by Aaron Leach, gets up the inside, oh, Harry Stewart's been taken out, he's tangled up with Michael Stewart, his namesake, hey, he nearly rolls it over the marker tyres there. Frankie JJ was caught up as well, a bit of stunt driving there from Harry Stewart on the speedway track. We have a change of leader, Aaron Leach has taken over from uh, Kelvin Hassell. Carl Hawkins in at 175 is up into second place. So the race settling in, a slightly depleted roster for this one then. Matt Newson going well in number 16. Johan Katzberg in behind him, but Ben Herman gets the bumper in there going in. No, they're going round instead. Both spin out, Johan Katzberg and Ben Herman. I thought they were going straight on into the wall. As Carl Hawkins makes a move, he's taken the lead, coming out of uh, turn two there. 
Carl Hawkins in 175, the XB8 Hot Stops driver, your new race leader. Second place, Aaron Leach. Lee Fairhurst up there in third in 217. Fairhurst now going through into second place. Been a relatively quiet season on the tarmac for the man from Bolton, the 2012 world champion Lee Fairhurst, won that at Skegness, which is uh, scheduled to be the venue for the 2018 world championship final. Carl Hawkins who leads in 175. Fairhurst second, Junior Wayman's up there in his last race for the time being as number one. It's the bumper in on Aaron Leach and go through into third place now behind Lee Fairhurst. Matt Newsom's not far away either, having his best run of the night. It's Hawkins who leads from Fairhurst. There's Kelvin Hassel, the early leaders from further back in the order. Junior Wayman's done the fastest lap of the race. Worth watching in the second half of this one. There's the Union flag, we're halfway through. Matt Newson gets the bumper in on the number 70 of Aaron Leach with Ross Sonic and Joblin into the wall at turn one. Not a good night for the New Zealanders as in goes the bumper from Lee Fairhurst. He takes the lead around turns three and four as they lap Wayne Marshall in 483 and Junior Wayman's following through into second place. Lee Fairhurst with the lead then in 217. Coming up to lap, Frankie JJ, Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. in treble five. With Frankie Wayman Jr. in behind Fairhurst, could we see some team play coming to uh, the equation of this race? Lee Fairhurst got a Wayman ahead of him. Wayman behind him, but he still leads the race. Frankie JJ got caught up on the uh, early laps with Harry Stewart and Michael Stewart. Saw Harry Stewart take a flyer over the marker tyres, he was lucky not to roll. A lucky night for young Harry. Still Lee Fairhurst from Wayman Jr. Carl Hawkins, Matt Newson, Aaron Leach rounding out the top five. And behind him we've got Steve Whittle, he's running well. And then Stuart Smith from the lap handicap, I think, and up into seventh place now. He's running well. Fairhurst comes up to lap Frankie JJ. He's got to be careful here because the treble five might try to block him down towards turns three and four this time. Fairhurst up the inside. He does manage to get past the trouble five, but this is allowed. The number one car to close in. Junior Wayman, son Frankie JJ, tried to block Lee Fairhurst. Fairhurst has got through. Only a couple of laps to go now. Here they come down towards turns three and four. It's going to be an interesting finish this one. Wayman tries to lunge in and flash a flame from the exhaust of the 217 car, can Lee Fairhurst hang on for one more lap, into turn one, in goes the bumper, the gold top up the inside, determined to sign off with the gold roof in style, Frankie Wakeman Jr. takes the lead, down the back straight they go, Fairhurst will fight back, gets the bumper in, they're both going to go out wide, Frankie JJ is there on the inside, they're going to finish three wide, these three, he blocks Fairhurst, Wakeman squeezed on the outside but he just got there over the line, bouncing off the wall as he crossed the line, and Frankie Wakeman Jr. in number one for the last time, before handing over the gold to Nigel Green, wins the Ben Turner Memorial Trophy Grand National. Very fitting, as Ben Turner was a big Wayneman fan. Unlucky Lee Fairhurst just missing out there in a cracking finish. That's the uh, much the best race we've seen tonight. And the drivers cut loose in celebration with some tyre burning. Let's have a look again. There's the bumper in from Lee Fairhurst. They both ran wide. Frankie JJ was able to tackle Fairhurst on the run to the line. The, the uh, eventual race winner, Junior Wayneman, bouncing off the wall. Almost did a wheelie across the line, just about got it home. One last time, one last win, number one, yeah. Frankie Wayman. Yeah, it meant the world, that one. Obviously, it was Benny's memorial, done a lot of time with Benny, you know what I mean, when he was little. And I really wanted to win it right from the start. I don't think I've ever won it. It's, the world final's always an hard night. Obviously, last year I wasn't even allowed in it because I won the world final. You know what I mean, every year's been here. Yeah, yeah. And this year I was really, really, and Lee was going so well. And I knew I, I needed to get him that then, but I didn't want to put him in that park car. Do you know what I mean? I, I didn't want to get it. I, I just didn't get enough on him, I don't think. And he come at me that end. But I went in deep and he came round. I seen him in the mirror going sideways. So I just rattled around the wall and he lifted off the floor going over the line. I don't know what would have going on. I must have rattled the wall a bit and jumped, but it was good. From where we were standing, it looked like uh, JJ squeezed Lee, but just carried on squeezing and took you as well. No, I, I were already out there. I don't know what they were doing, but I just fucking was getting to the line. I was just focused on that line. That's all I wanted to do. But yeah, it's, it's ended a really good night for me. That obviously, you know, back in the world final with a third, you know, it, it, it was a good way to lose it. If you like, if there's a way to lose it. Do you know what I mean? You want to be on the podium. I've been on the podium a lot, so I've enjoyed it. You know, I say a big thank you to the sponsors and the fans, obviously the family for tonight, you know, everything, you know, it's a big team job. And now you'll concentrate on the shootout? Yeah, definitely, yeah, we've been a good start in the shootout. Um, 
had a bit of a bad look at Birmingham, the first one, but we weren't too far behind the points and had a good Bellevue and back up there in second. I think it's going to be a good championship, I really do. Uh, a lot of the lads want to win it and they're keen for it. And, you know, when you've got like 10 or 12 all going for it, and when we are, then, you know, it should be fireworks. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Let's have a look at the results of that race then. Junior Wayneman taking the win by eight hundredths of a second ahead of Lee Fairhurst. Carl Hawkins finishing in third place ahead of Matt Newson and Aaron Leach. The race winner, Junior Wayman, also got the fastest lap. Well, that's about all from World Final 2017. Hope you've enjoyed the action. Many congratulations to the new world champion, 445 Nigel Green. More stock car action coming up here soon, but it's goodbye for now.